Let's start. Okay. And now we're starting. Yep. Okay. Hi guys, this is Gabby Hoffman. Yeah. And Jason Strong. <laughs> um, strong man. Q and A type thing. Type sort of thing. Yeah. All about deadlifts. All well, mostly about deadlifts. Yeah. We're going to experiment with some new features today, um, such as in the news. Um, when we say news, I think we're talking about our Facebook feed. Yeah. Because we're everybody under, gets their news oh. under a certain name. Um, where did that come from? It's like anime something, I don't know. Uh, there's an interview with uh, oh. Ronda Rousey and yes. uh, 30 of my not so closest friends like shared it this morning, in, in which she, uh, she describes herself as the not a do nothing bitch. Yes. Um, and there are some, there's some, there's some tweetables, <laughs> there's some quotable moments in there. Definitely. Um, but I, we were talking before we started, uh, uh, we both saw this. Um, the, I think one of the interesting things to us uh, was noting that there's probably about 90% positive responses, especially amongst our friends, which probably include a certain subset of the American population which is most likely to be approving of Ronda Rousey. Right. But nevertheless, um, I think we both had friends who were like, oh, well, you know, I appreciate her message, but why does she so much. Um, <laughs> Which was pretty entertaining uh, to us, anyways. I thought it was pretty entertaining. Sometimes when I hear those types of things, I, I think it's like the weed in a sort of like ball shucks like, kind of way, and I, I just kind of like, oh. Um, and sometimes it, it really irritates the shit out of me. <laughs> uh, but mostly I just thought it was really kind of dumb and naive. Um, but then, I think we both started thinking a little bit more, like, why does this matter? Like, why is this, like, the sort of uh, knee-jerk reaction that's, like, so accessible to so many people? And, uh, you know, we were both like, I think it's because... She's a girl. <laughs> she's a woman. And um, ladies are supposed to swear. Yeah. So since the 1950s. Yeah, well, actually, I, there was more than one comment of, like, like, that's not really, like, it's yeah. a, um, it's weird. I think you could have a, a much more um, interesting conversation about our society. Uh, she gets paid to break girls' arms on TV. Like the reason she's paid so much to break arms is because we pay so much for watching it being done. In uh, under 15 seconds. That's <laughs> that's a lot. That's a lot more unsettling than her saying fuck. Um, and and her point about her career alternatives, like. Being fundable um, is probably uh, again a lot more of a uh, interesting topic than whether or not she swears. So she had some really. I thought the video was really good. There are a lot of diverse reactions, like Jason said. So we would be interesting in hearing your reactions. So you should yeah. comment on the YouTube. So again, uh, we assume that people who watch this are mostly women, mostly interested in being a strong man. So, female athletes yeah. in a male-dominated sport. Uh, I'm really intrigued to like see if we get a conversation going about like whether or not it matters that Ronda Rousey swears on a television interview or not. Right. That makes her a better role model or a worse role model. Whether or not she's responsible for being a role model. Um, yeah. I don't know. So comment, tell us, <laughs> give us your thoughts. Yeah. Give us all of your thoughts on this particular topic. <laughs> um, we could talk about it for days. <laughs> so, uh, speaking of days, and other news in the near future. <laughs> um, so, we also thought we would experiment with a little, like, uh, you know, what do you call it? a show calendar. I did. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> uh, a show calendar. Yes. Um, and a show calendar. That's a terrible name. I but know. But we just thought we'd to talk about shows. Sure. Um, specific, honestly, to our region, which is uh, the Mid-Atlantic, I guess. Mm -hmm. uh, we're in Richmond, Virginia, um, and within a couple hours' drive, we've got uh, Northern Virginia, D.C., Baltimore, uh, and Philly, really, uh, places in North Carolina, like Charlotte and Raleigh, um, that have probably uh, Virginia Beach, uh, 
uh, some famous or well-known or uh, not famous or well-known, but important, <laughs> like you know, strongman, powerlifting gyms, as well as some very successful CrossFit affiliates that have been promoting shows uh, like crazy. Um, and speaking of which, I am wearing my shirt from last year's uh, 48 Hours of Power. They, uh, this is hosted by uh, our fierce rivals, uh, CrossFit RBA. Uh, may they burn in hell. Uh, I'm just kidding. Uh, and, no, I'm, I'm very much kidding. Uh, so it was a strongman show on Saturday, and then a weightlifting meet on Sunday, so like two days back to back. And there was even one or two athletes that competed in both. Uh, uh, these guys run a tight show. Um, they, they're two partners. Uh, Chris Boyer has been promoting strongman shows for like a decade now. Um, so he's very experienced in, in that domain. And then his uh, CrossFit compatriot, Jake Rowell, has been uh, running these Superfit games for a couple of years. Um, so obviously they both have a ton of experience about how to run an event, and they do a great job. Uh, I've only competed in one, but I've coached athletes in like five. Um, they've always run on time and finish early. They've always had like great prizes. They've always been very fast to update the scores, um, stuff like that. Um, they always have a, a very, they have an oversized facility. They have more room than they need. And so they're, they're good shows. Uh, they have the a River City Strongman Challenge coming up August 29th? 29th. Yes. Pretty sure. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm 100. 99% sure it's August 29th. Yeah. Um, anyways, uh, if you're a female looking to compete, uh, all divisions are open. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's still a little light, and that sucks because uh, there's two women already in the heavyweight division. Both, both of them already won. One has earned her spot at nationals. So I'm not sure about the other. Um, I don't think, I don't know what the registrations are like for the lightweights and middleweights, which is a little unusual for our region. There's a lot of good lightweights and middleweights. And then I think the, the novice is actually kind of cool though. Uh, so if you're looking for a first show and you want to have a crowd, uh, I think it'll be a good place to go. Especially if you want to have a first show that will suck. Because uh, it won't yeah. suck. It's going to yeah. be a great show. They, like Jason said, they run a really, really great show. Gabby, where was your first show? It was there. Yeah. It was actually there. Mm, the tire's still there. The tire, I still need to go exact revenge on that fucking tire. <laughs> um, the week after. September 5th? Yes, September 5th. Uh, it is Harvest Queen. Our good friends, uh, ladies, live here. We may yes. have mentioned it in a prior episode, too. Okay. But yes, that is up in Northern Virginia, correct? It okay. is in Vienna. In Vienna, yeah. Tyson's Corner. So, yeah, Northern Virginia area, September 5th. Yeah. At the Edge. And it will be a really good show to come watch if you've never expected a strongman show. They'll, they usually bring in a lot of really good sponsors, uh, but they also run a fantastic show. Yep. And they are one of the few shows that pretty much sell out all the time. Yeah. So it, it's, it'll, it'll be off. Awesome. I think it's a, it's a destination show for, for women. Definitely. Because it's kind of like you know the, the weight class will actually be full. Um, and that is... It is. All right, so two great shows coming up in four and five. The cat is out of the bag that uh, Gabby and I will also be promoting our own show uh, November 7th. Here so depending on, you, depending on how you count, it's like 13, 14 weeks out. So there's still plenty of time to train for that. Um, in fact, uh, early registration is only 45 bucks. That ends tomorrow. Mm -hmm. uh, so if you want to save a few bucks, sign up now. Presuming we release this video <laughs> before, <laughs> before Friday. Maybe uh, we'll at least put yeah. something on the Facebook page. <laughs> we, uh, so our show is called The Beer City Brawl. Uh, we're here in Scott's Edition in Richmond, Virginia. We're completely surrounded by like craft breweries. Um, so we uh, are working on finding a craft brewing sponsor who will uh, actually be here to serve beer during the show, which um, you don't really see very often. It's kind of fun. Uh, we do, we have a uh, like food truck lined up, so there's going to be, it's 
going to be a little more spectator friendly, we hope, than some shows. Uh, it's it's going to be fun to actually be here, hopefully. Um, the events are all on the uh, entry form. Uh, there's a lot of keg-related stuff uh, for you know, thematic reasons. <laughs> for, uh, and because we have a lot of kegs. And there is a, uh, there's a max deadlift event, uh, a Wessels Cool deadlift event. What an excellent segue. That is yeah, such a good segue. Yes. So, uh, in the world of Strongman, there are really two types of deadlifts events that you're going to come up to. You yeah. got your... Like, Wessels Rule Max type thing, and then your reps, where you have to do as many reps as possible in some domain, usually 60 or 75 seconds, which 75 seconds just sounds disgusting. But max reps in 60 seconds. Yes. <laughs> yes, it is. Well said, yeah. Thanks. Um, so, I guess before we move on, for anybody who's like a super duper novice, Wessel's Rule um, is the most commonly used uh, technique for organizing a deadlift and max event. And essentially, what they do is not unlike Olympic weightlifting, where um, the bar starts at whoever's like lightest opener or at some arbitrary number. You know, like uh, they'll just set up 405, and that's the starting point. Um, and typically, for women, the weights jump 20 pounds, 20, 20 yeah, 30. Yeah. That's pretty common. It kind of depends too. Some some implements uh, the weights are much larger, and so maybe the scales are bigger. But uh, nevertheless, uh, for women, usually the, the weights jump like 20 or 30 pounds at a time. For men, it's usually like 50 pounds at a time. And so. It's, it's essentially like an option. The bar will start at a certain weight and all the contestants will be offered the opportunity to lift it or not. Uh, and when uh, you know, the auctioneer gets to the going once, going twice kind of thing, they just add whatever the next step is going to be. And then everyone gets a chance to lift it. Um, as an individual contestant, you're, you're allowed up to three attempts. Um, the fun part is uh, that when you fail, uh, when you fail to complete a lift in under 60 seconds, you're out. Whether it's your first, second, or third attempt. Um, so you don't want to. You don't want to miss. Uh, on the other side, uh, for the purposes of breaking a tie, which are very common when making 50 pound jumps or you know, even 20 or 30 pound jumps, um, for the purposes of breaking a tie, whoever did it first, uh, i.e., either on their, the lower of their available attempts, will win the tie. So. Uh, let's say Gabby and I are competing against each other and we both open at 300. We're going to get a tie tie. And then she's going to win because she weighs less. Right? But let's say we both get 300 and fail at 350, but 350 is her third lift and it's my second. Uh, I'm going to get going to get the win on the 300 being my first lift where I was second. So. Uh, there's a little gamesmanship there. You kind of want to open as happy as you can in a way. Uh, you don't want to miss. But you don't want to miss. Yeah. So uh, it's kind of fun. It's a little strategy there. Sometimes, yeah. You can you can creep around the bat and try to you know pull everybody for what you're going to open with and also the crap. Uh, right. But really, I think it's very helpful to train with the implement to kind of know exactly what you can do and, and kind of go in and open to something that's Know, less than whatever that step is, like away from your max. Yeah. Then you can, then you have a bonus lift on your second or third lift uh, to go nuts. Uh, but my now that I've done a few 18s, like 18 inch lifts with Wessels, like I kind of know what's up. Uh, I've gotten way better at just jumping right in it. Pretty much, it's probably going to be my last lift unless I get lucky, um, and that's fine. It's good for second lifts. <laughs> <laughs> Which is a very pleasing result for someone who's not very good at it. Anywho, so that, that's Wesley's rule for Max. Um, the alternative, like Gabby said, is. Uh, yeah, repping it out. So. Repping it out. Repping it out all day. So, or for 60 seconds, which feels like all day when you're wearing a belt on deadlifting. But usually this can be either from the floor or from a different height, like 15 or 18 inches. Uh, there will always be a down command, there will occasionally be an up command. Um, that is something that I think a lot of novices have some trouble with. Um, you can't just totally cross fit the shit out of it uh, most of the time if you won't get any calls. So I think that practicing with the commands is actually a pretty important piece of training an event like that. That's a big thing that I think uh, all of our athletes benefit from here is 
we like we wrap each other. Like when it's time to like go max out, like you get a judge, you get down commands, and you get no you get no lifted for shitty stuff. Um, and it really helps you prepare for contests. Yep. Um, so on to the implements. So the first thing would be a barbell, right? right? Most of you guys, barbell. yeah, if you're doing this video here, uh, hopefully you've done lifted a barbell from the floor before. Um, but honestly, that's a very important starting place, like as far as the sport too. I mean, it doesn't get contested that often. But all things being equal, if you deadlift more on a barbell from the floor than your opponents, uh, you have a really good chance of winning. Right. So it's a, it's important to just generally be a good deadlifter. Um, so barbells are common, and like Gabby said, they can start at nine inches, which is the height that would be provided by a barbell plate. They can start. Um, at truck tire height, which could really be any inch, but yeah, it tends to be about 15 or 16 inches. Uh, 18 is also very common, mm -hmm. so it's basically it's just starting with regular weights on like a 9 inch block. Yeah. Um, so that the bar starts at 18. Um, what else is out there? I mean, for conventional, that's kind of. Yeah, so, yeah, so that's the barbell situation. Uh, Similar things for axles. It's really common to basically just do the same thing with the axle. Um, you don't necessarily see a ton of axles combined with truck tires um, because a lot of the fun with the truck tire is the uh, flexibility of the material. And then if the bar doesn't whip, which an axle is not going to whip, nope. it kind of ruins the whole fun of that. Um, but it still looks cool. Yeah, I think it was at so, Nationals a couple of years ago. Tire axle yeah, it still looks cool, so you'll definitely still see it. Uh, I'll, to be totally honest, I, uh, a lot of promoters choose implements and events based on how cool they look. Everybody, you, I mean, you judge the success of your show by how many people change their Facebook profile pictures. I think that that is absolutely true. Uh, so, uh, with the axle, uh, what's different about the axle, Gabby? The axle is really thicker. Uh, it is also hollow, right? Like we talked about on our axle video before. They're usually, they don't have any knurling most of the time, um, so there is sort of a slickness to it, but I think really the width is the major factor there. Um, a lot of times there will not be straps allowed if they want to make it a more grip style event, um, which sucks with the tiny hand like I do, um, or straps would be allowed. It really depends. I've seen kind of like equal amount of yeah. ways. It really depends on the, I guess, the philosophical yeah. landings of the promoter. Um, What's weird is uh, with the axle, because of the size of it, I would say that if you're allowed to do so, an alternating grip is pretty much necessary. Yes. Um, and so if you're not going to use straps, you're almost certain to be alternating your grip, which is more dangerous for the yeah. biceps. Um, yeah, like if you gotta and then choke up on it a little bit. Um, but then, like, <clears throat> Uh, if you're doing straps, like basically to make it safer, not that there's no point to it, but like, what's the point of yeah. using straps on an axle? Like, the only thing that's like kind of unique about the axle, and this is not the only thing, but like that is, it's big, it's hard to grab. That's so weird. it's a that's a weird discussion. I think that the axle is actually uh, harder to deadlift too because it's bigger, so yeah. it's going to be. Hey, you don't let me yeah, God, I hope we made it to something. I hope we finished whatever we put that. Uh, I hope so too. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. It's fun to be yeah. Thanks. Um, so when we were talking fun. about World's Strongest Man, we were talking yeah. about like frame deadlifts. So car deadlifts, wheelbarrow, wheelbarrow, sheds. Um, it'll come back. It'll come back. I we'll know. We'll see. It. I know. Uh, <laughs> and uh, those are unique, I guess, in the, the, the sense that they're a first class lever. Mm -hmm. You're like, mm -hmm. I'm not even sure if that's right. It's one type uh, of lever, but I think it's the first class. I think it is the first class lever. So actually. you have a full from, and you have like, you know, the lever and arm, you go like this. Yeah. Uh, what's weird about doing those deadlifts is like, you know, depending on your height, you, you go back mm -hmm. on the way up. Um, it's very strange to do if you've never done it before, um, and the setup seems really counterintuitive to a lot of people. I, I think it's fairly similar to doing a trap bar deadlift. Yeah, um, except there's the whole backwards yeah. thing. And I think that that's, um, that's definitely how I learned how to deadlift deadlift. Mm -hmm. I mean, heavy on your heels and, and 
backwards and stuff. So I don't think it's that weird. Uh, and I don't mind it, per se. I don't but, hate it either. But it's hard. It is. It's hard and exhausting. If you're doing it for reps, which is most often how you see it, um, it's for groups. Two shows, yeah. The two shows that I had, uh, a event like that, and are shed. And the shed was, uh, I think, chosen because it was light enough uh, to where you could, you, could, you could start off pretty low and mm -hmm. have like a lightweight amount of swimming, like recommend out and stuff. Um, and then you, but it was easy to add weight to. Uh, and uh, I think that was when I, was, I did a novice show for that, and it was like, wasn't too heavy. And so the guy who won the division did like 30 something reps. Yeah. And, um, you know, like whatever the 15 or 20 that um, me and Brandon got was mm -hmm. like so so. Um, doing 15 or 20, even moderately heavy deadlifts, is fucking exhausting. <laughs> Uh, that was fucking soul crushing. Yeah, it, it's pretty, pretty murderous. Yeah, the next time I did that was like a year or two later in the car, and uh, I thought I'd been training pretty well for that because uh, I'd been doing like an actual car frame type of thing with just with, with the tire action. Uh, and it turns out the tires weigh a lot less than cars. Yeah, I do. Uh, I should have. <laughs> it's pretty obvious. Yeah. And so, uh, yeah, I got I got up to that thing and I did like one rap. I was like, cool. And then I did like the second one, and I was like, not cool. <laughs> and then I did like number three or four, and I was like, gonna die. <laughs> and it was, it was awful. You see the the car deadlift implement with the tires a lot for female divisions, um, which I've done before, and it kind of sucks because the tire can bounce around. Um, so something has to go and steady it, or it's moving all over the place. Pro tip: cars bounce around too. <laughs> yeah. Shed bounce around. Titties on a shed bounce around. Everything bounces around. Yeah, there's. It's just really an awkward thing, and I think actually implement specific practice for that helps a lot. Yeah, it does. Uh, specificity is um, always pretty damn good. Yeah. Uh, We've discussed that before. Yeah. Okay, so cars, wheelbarrows, yeah. um, an actual frame. Yeah, and I actually, uh, yeah, frames are. I'm surprised we don't see more of frames because. Uh, I'm thinking of myself as like a gym owner and now like a contest promoter, like, really easy to do. Yeah. Pretty cheap, like, and, you know, really easy to weight, like, however you want. So, I'm surprised we don't see more of those, and I, I wouldn't be surprised if we do see more uh, in the future. Uh, I wouldn't call the frame, like, such a traditional event just yet, but uh, there is a frame deadlift at uh, Masters and Headway National this year. Yeah. Um, and uh, that's for reps. Uh, though theoretically, one can do that for max. Yeah, uh, that is. Yeah, like uh, the thought occurred to me when we were talking about the car. Like, well, you don't do that for max. It's like, well, you, you could, I guess. Mm -hmm. uh, but it would be very difficult to do. You know? uh, yeah. Whereas the frame, I mean, you can load it like a barbell, I guess. So, yeah. uh, picking up a frame is almost totally identical to doing something with like a trap. Mm -hmm. You stand inside of it, so you go straight up the middle. Um, so it's definitely a little different, totally different from an axle. Um, kind of different from a barbell. Yeah, I don't think I've ever had a contest with a frame. I think that the, I think the frame deadlift and the, the farmer walk pit are good measurements of just like absolute stand upness. You know, maybe <laughs> like stand upness. It's it's like it's a little less technical. Yeah. Me. I think that uh, you don't have to be perfect per se, and I think you see some interesting technical deviations based on leverages. Mm -hmm. Like you'll you'll see people do a frame deadlift where and a, and a farmer's walk pit. Where like if that was a barbell deadlift, you know, you would be like, that is the shittiest looking deadlift I've ever seen. And what they're really doing is they're getting they're getting their shoulder blades uh, closer closer to the implement or they're getting the implement closer to their basic support by way of grabbing a spine. Yeah. Um, but it works as far as the mechanics go uh, until something breaks. Yeah, well. <laughs> uh, but usually doesn't, because again, the, the, the bar is in the front. It's so the front. there's so much less torque on the spine. Uh, I, I would argue that it kind of makes it safer, even though it looks a lot worse. I, I think that probably frames and armor walk thing. I don't know anybody who's ever really like injured themselves doing in those things, okay. even though they're usually grotesquely heavy. Yeah, um, it's usually pretty awful. Usually it usually feels pretty bad. And it's also one of those things where you just kind of have to keep pulling for a second. Well, it doesn't come yeah. up. Sort of instantly, uh, like a conventional marble does, but you gotta work a little bit. 
that frames, frames that are, are all pretty much like handmade, so mm -hmm. we can't really generalize and say, oh, frames are going to be this high or that high. However, usually they're, they're taller, like yeah. 13, 15 inches or above. Um, kind of like farmer blocks. That's mm -hmm. what they're meant to be. They're meant to be like a, a one piece farmer. Um, but I think people are getting a little more creative with how to use both of those implements because everybody has them. Everybody is probably getting tired of seeing the same blocks over and over again. I think we'll see lots of those. Yeah. All right. Well, so in summation, Gabby, well, not in summation, but let's say moving on. Okay. Like, how, did, how does one train from one round maxing in all of those events? That's a pretty broad topic. It is. Yeah. We've covered part of this in our training videos, so we will like, try to reiterate that. but. I think the big point we want to make is that you train for a rep contest and a max contest very differently. Um, <laughs> Most of I, I, I think it, it depends. You, you know what? Yeah, like how you plan to train for a show is based on how much you actually know what's going to happen to you in gym. Mm -hmm. um, and so if you have access to the actual implements, that's a good place to start. Like if you know the show is like at your gym or you know it's like you know your town or you go yeah. to it's becoming increasingly common that gyms will open up you know there's Saturdays you know you can come in and do like a, a pre contest like show and stuff like that yeah and so if you can actually go in and use your toys then you can test yourself out a little bit and figure out you know what your max is on this or that so that you can make an educated decision but if uh, you know you're you're driving you know five hours to go to the show or whatever and you're never going to get to test yourself before you get there. Um, I've kind of learned to not overthink it too much, like as far as, like, uh, to operate a little bit more generally instead of being super specific. And I've also learned that you can show up on the day of the show and I'll just change all the weights. <laughs> so or, it won't really matter. Or all, all, all the implements. Yeah. Um, and thankfully that happens less and less. And there's less and less people that are just like, it's from me, I'm um, But it still happens. Uh, uh, <laughs> uh, Rona, uh, the Commonwealth Games was supposed, uh, yeah. supposed to be a truck character, isn't it? Oh, um, and it was just the same that we had? Yep. Oh. Yep. But I know how to do anything. Yeah, so. So it's okay. So it was okay. Like, that's the other thing. I think the more shows you go to, the more experience you have, like, the less you get ruffled by promoters. Yeah, because it's going to... Some, some promoters are very professional. Yeah. Like, uh, this uh, River City Strongman Challenge, it's going to be what it says it's going to be. Uh, it's going to run the way it's supposed to run. Uh, other promoters, you might get some surprises. Not so sometimes you get surprises. Sometimes. 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 But Let's like most, of, yeah, sometimes. Okay, we'll just say it. So how should you train for one max? I think that there's people out there that would argue that you should uh, lift really, really heavy for very low reps. Um, All the time, always. Frequently. And then there's people that would argue that you can't do that because it's too hard. Uh, and they should only do it infrequently, but you should still do that. I think there's people that train the deadlift with a lot of volume and not so much intensity. Um, and I think that there's a lot of there's a lot of people who uh, they deadlift, you know, on leg days, like twice a week, and they're very regular routines or program. Um, all four of those templates are philosophically like contrary to the others. Right. And uh, there's probably athletes winning contests and being some of the best in the country on all of those programs. Um, a, little, a little individually specific in that way. I mean, I, following, uh, I, I was just thinking like Kristen uh, Lane Newman for yeah. a year now. Um, and she trains under Alderson, right? Yeah. Alderson? Alderson. Yes. Now you're uh, Oh, God. Uh, but anyways, you know um, about. I would say it's safe to say that um, it's, at least during portions of her uh, training year, she trains the ball of the deadlift by ball. Yes. Uh, 10 right. sets of Shit. 10 things like that. Um, and that is a stuff. She also has an extremely high deadlift max already. Like, I don't know, she's well into the 400s, if I remember correctly. So her her work, being with the background in powerlifting, being a naturally ranked Olympic weightlifter, um, and sort of having a very, very high max going into strongman, I think she said several times that her weakness isn't necessarily the static strength, or just the brute strain, it's the conditioning. And it's sort of the heavy breathing stuff. So that might work a little bit better because that's your weak spot. I've, I've come to realize though, there's a lot of really good strength athletes out there that are all saying the same thing. Um, 
that you have to have a seasonal approach, um, and that what drives uh, peak strength more than anything else is volume accumulation first. Um, so just doing more work, and I think that's one thing that's kind of missing from a lot of, I guess, power lifting influence programs. Yeah. That are kind of like one rep max specific. Uh, there's not a lot of, you know, five to ten sets, of five to ten reps out there, and uh, it's not something I've done a ton of because I really started with like a little weightlifting and power lifting, and like anything over like three is like a no. Um, especially with the deadlift because everyone's scared yeah, of it. Yeah, Like it's gonna kill you. Um, and what I'm noticing is there's some, there's some small guys that have some massive pulls, and they do a lot of like fives and tens. You know, it's like obviously they're doing like. 60% max or right. Their max is very high. They're, they're doing a lot of tonnage. Um, and, you know, if your tonnage is going up, you get to get the weight, you're getting stronger. Um, at some point, you take the tonnage away and you focus on the intensity a little bit, and uh, the truth can come along. And then there's the truth that 50% of the time, you need to one rep max. The other 10 of the time, you need to be able to fill 60 seconds. Yeah, 10 reps isn't even. Seconds, you know? yeah. So like saying like 10 seconds is heavy breathing and cardio and stuff is kind of cutting 60 seconds short, you know? It's like, right. So. And it depends, like I know I can, I can rep something within 60 seconds and it's pretty close to my max all day. Uh, but those are also better events for me where my one rep max and like static and oriented work is my weak point, the opposite of Kristen that way. I do think that's athlete specific. I will say I would make the gender generalization that women are able to perform more repetitions at a higher percent of women at max more often than men are. Um, for some, I would say some physiological reasons, but mostly probably just from a training background perspective. Um, usually, like usually, there's just a lot more cardio back there. Somewhere, yeah. You know? um, So, uh, find a deadlift program that works for you and do it. Yeah. I think the best deadlift program is one that probably has you deadlifting uh, as often as possible. Um, like heavy occasionally, and um, then you can recover from it. That gets you, that gets you up in tonnage uh, in a regular way. Uh, yeah, I think it's, I do think it happens in one of those things. That is, that is pretty athlete specific, and we've tried a couple of different deadlift programs and approaches. Yeah. And all of all the members of our team kind of have things that work for them and individually. I don't think you can really make a blanket statement about our team members as far as no. what works for us. I think deadlifting has a ton to do with uh, uh, leverages and proportions mm -hmm. and mentality. Um, when you need to deadlift something, you need to do it. Yeah. Um, <laughs> So with implement specific stuff, for the axle, like what would be good for the axle, if you can't wear straps, then it's probably going to be a grip contest. Yeah. So anything that looks grips like that. I, I think plate pinches are good because they're like holding a finger's yeah. Um But honestly, you need... Yeah, yeah. Those are good. Rolling thunder. If you have Rolling enough. thunder. Farmer's holes. Kind of gross. Um, Very less specific to the yeah. axle, but probably good for uh, the upper back and the and stuff. So I think farmers walks on the regular would probably be a good thing for any deadlifter. Um, just to build up endurance yeah. and grip, which could be important for like long pull and higher ups. So I would say that RDLs are super important for the axle too because you yeah, probably right. have the bar in front of you too much. Um, for a regular barbell, uh, do whatever that deadlift is, right? Yeah. Do a lot. Um, yeah. You can you can talk to a powerlifting coach about what you're doing well and what you're not doing well on the deadlift and get any specific feedback there. Um, truck tire, I think uh, we have some friends over at the weight room uh, who have rigged up like a magnet set up to where there's a magnet like gluing the bar to the floor and it's like 50 pounds worth so it's like you have to break the magnet off the ground before the deadlift starts. And uh, I remember the first time I saw this year or two ago, or five, thinking that it was like way too overcomplicated. Um, but now that I've failed um, to do 18 inches uh, at weights I've done before, because I was just too big of a pussy to keep pulling, 
uh, I realize like how advantageous that training method probably is. I, would, I don't know if you're not into maggots. I don't know how to, <laughs> how to replicate that exactly. But Just try I think that's something important to know about truck tires, and maybe even 18 inches. Like, uh, simply be patient with the weight of the water. Yeah, you really are really trying to Maybe claws work, you know? Claws work would actually be really good. Just to build up strength in certain positions. I think that's why I was out on um, heavy deadlifts. It's like, you're usually in that worst place when it comes to like sort of like, the vulnerability of your like low back. Mm -hmm. uh, when you have to pull the hardest for the longest. Uh, and it spikes me out. Yeah, and uh, it's, that's also pretty leverage specific. Like, we've got a couple girls who are short, they've got tiny little legs, and so an 18 inch step for them is they open their hips and they're done. Yeah. Um, and then we've got taller athletes who basically don't have much of a difference between their pool from the floor and an 18 inch because it starts in such a bad place for them. Um, and then like you have a pretty big difference between your floor and 18 inch. I have a really big difference between my floor and 18 inch. Um, and we're both kind of like in the middle. We're not short. Well, I am short, but I've got really long legs. Yeah. I think we're both set up to where the bar is just below the knee when it starts. And, yeah, um, like you as it. long as it gets above the knee, um, so like <laughs> when you can make yeah. it two inches, it's done. Yeah, um, uh, for locking out 18s and stuff, you'll see people who probably, I guess more than anything else, have weak glutes. I mm -hmm. uh, have an inability to fully extend the hip. Um, that's really easy to train. Uh, again, with RDLs, it's probably helpful, but really like the uh, the hip thrust or the bridge, um, or even like sumo work and band work where it gets heavier at the top, mm -hmm. those things can go a long way. But I would say like glue bridges is a really direct way to just... Glue bridge and hip thrust. Glue bridge can load up really fun yeah. heavy too. Uh, as long as you don't mind it. Like shatter. Yeah. Uh, All this. Uh, so, what else? Uh, and so for the car frame stuff, that's... I think a trap bar is a great, cheap, easy way to start. Like, um, especially if you have an elevated handle trap bar, because uh, it's probably going to be a higher start anyways. And what we've learned, we have a trap bar that has an elevated handle, um, that the trap bar spins. Um, so if you don't have a secondary sort of lever to stabilize it or to, to pull it both directions equally, it, it'll, it'll tip. Uh, and that's... Hit forward or backward. Yeah. That's distracting. It is. Uh, and if you actually have an actual frame, yeah. do that. That's, that's, the, that's the best. I would say that, you know, for Strongman, the trap bar deadlift uh, is probably a great, that would be a huge uh, metric for like so many things. Uh, oh, great. So like, I think that's a good just general training technique. I think it's something that you can do a little heavier, a little bit easier, a little bit safer. So I like, guess a win-win. Yeah. Yeah. Good yeah. okay. trap bar. I think for training, I think like a hard deadlift, I think, I think actually front squats are very helpful with that. A lot of people have a problem with kind of like getting their hips through aggressively at the top. That's what I see a lot for women, especially, uh, when they're doing a hard deadlift. And they'll pull it and they just can't fit the glutes. Um, or they're kind of in a weird position where they're trying to do a conventional deadlift and not just, I think it has a more front squatting position uh, as well. But my trap bar work. For sure. <laughs> <laughs> really, uh, so the frame would be the same thing. The frame mm -hmm. is a trap bar. I mean, for all purposes. If you know for a fact that the handles are higher or wider or thicker, that might change your philosophy a little mm -hmm. bit. Uh, but yeah, uh, buy yourself a pair of straps. Know how to use them. Yep, buy good straps too. Buy the long straps. Long if you're going to work on axes or if you're going to work on reps. Yeah, especially on something like the car deadlift. Um, because it, if your straps come loose, you, in 60 seconds you don't have like, the time to strap yourself back in without wasting a ton of time. It's much harder to do on the side um, than the person that is in front of you, I think. So, so yeah, yeah. Good straps, long straps, we talked about that in our gear video a little bit. Such a good unique opportunity. <laughs> uh, yeah, so I hope that uh, gives you an overview of all the bed Latinas. Uh, oh. Thing we were going to talk about. What's pitching. That? Oh, fuck that. <laughs> pitching. Um, so. I guess everybody's panties in a twist besides straps. <laughs> we, good, good observation. Um, so, we were talking earlier about uh, 
like the frame and farmer's block and ugly fucking deadlifts. Uh, but probably actually being safer. Uh, the funny thing is, is uh, hitching is good physics. Right? <laughs> right, it is. Um, it's good physics. And so if you know how to do it and, um, and it helps, uh, which it probably will, um, it's, it's a good thing to be able to do, to, to be allowed to do and, and know how to do effectively. Um, powerlifting is the sort of primary sport deadlifting. Um, and in powerlifting, if your knee angle recloses at any time during the ascent of the bar, it's considered hitching, um, and it's a no lift. You'll get red lighted for rebending the knees. Um, in Olympic weightlifting, when you pull from the floor, it's a super good technique to rebend the knees. Uh, in strongman, uh, it's really just important that you achieve a full lockout. It doesn't really matter how. Yeah, so uh, thusly, by nothing being disallowed, it is implied that everything is allowed, uh, including hitching. Uh, and all hitching is really doing is, in the physics sense, it's reducing the uh, horizontal distance between uh, the point that, at which the bar is being supported from and the point at which the bar is being elevated by. So your ass is over here and your shoulder is over here and you jam your knees under there, now the bar is directly, like, hanging directly below the shoulders, which is hanging, which is directly above the hips. So, when I'm here like this, the lever arm from my shoulder and the bar to my spine, laterally, is like 10 inches. When I'm like this, the lever arm is one inch. So, from a force multiplication standpoint, the torque on my spine when not hitching is 10 times greater than when I am hitching. Uh, and so if I'm trying to do, you know, three or four times body weight in an 18 inch deadlift, that is tremendously helpful. <laughs> For sure. And I think, uh, it's safer. and like I said, I guess everybody's paying attention to this. And it's mostly because people are like, it's cheating, it's strong, it's not cheating, it's cool. So, okay. um, you're going to probably have to hitch at some point so knowing how to do it effectively. And I would even argue that like, practicing your routine if you will, could be helpful. Um, and a lot of people just sort of do it, they just find themselves doing it and they're like, oh, that happened. Yeah. I've really never had to hitch competitively because yeah. my boots <laughs> are like dis disproportionately strong. Uh, so yeah, I don't think I really have either, but I, we're, yeah. we're both disproportionately good squatters compared to other Yeah. And yeah. yeah. And uh, yeah, I spent a lot of time uh, Doing a lot of hip thrusts. Doing a lot of hip thrusts, <laughs> doing a lot of glute bridges, doing a lot of kettlebell swings, uh, doing a lot of like jujitsu y stuff that's all like hip bridge oriented. So, like, I trained the shit out of stuff before I started swimming in. So, yeah. It works, man. Uh, I, I've got, I've got uh, peers who are have a similar level of experience to me and are similar to like height and weight. And, uh, you know, their, their 18 inch deadlifts are like, Five, ten percent heavier than what they deadlift on the floor. Um, yeah, my deadlift on the floor right now, as a 200 pound, is only really 475. It's been a while since I tested it, but I'm not saying that's any higher than that. Um, and I pulled 600 in competition uh, from 18 inches. So that is uh, almost like 30% greater. Um, yeah, I usually have a good 100 to probably 150 pound difference between. I pull from the floor and I pull from 18 inches. Yeah, and um, I've seen I've seen some guys that you know, have even higher proportions than me, um, but for the most part, it seems to be there or a little lower. Mm -hmm. um, and I think the key is: do you have straps? Do you know how to use them? Uh, do you have a strong upper back? Do you have strong glutes to lock out? Yeah, and I think uh, particularly with pitching, I've seen some people pitch and they pitch really well, and then they miss because they're not aggressively. Squeezing their ass, getting their hips through, and like so, strong ass yeah, is pretty important. Yeah, I I think it's more common for everyone to watch somebody fail on the floor. Yeah, it seems to happen more often. But you know, it's been one of those sort of puzzling and painful things for me to watch people get their bar like. I mean, it's just inches right away there, from yeah. walking, and not be able to walk out. I just never been able to understand it because you know, I I get bent to the floor all the time. Yeah, we have the same sticking point of like floor to mid shin. Once, okay. yeah. It's about there. It's Everybody was long. Yeah.
So anyways, so uh, learn your strengths and weaknesses. Make your weaknesses your strengths. Um, and train hard, train a lot, get your tonnage up. Do a hip thruster and a break. Up your dose, yeah. <laughs> Alright. That's it. That's it. Yeah. November 7th. Beer City Brawl. Come out. Come spectate. Come compete. Come press a keg. Come, come press a keg. Come get a truck keg. tire. Come flip a tractor tire. Come, come walk. walk a farmer. <laughs> Maybe not an actual farmer. Carry <laughs> a keg and load it over a bar. And then you can drink beer afterwards. Not once. Not twice. Four not, times. Not thrice, but four times. Four times. Oh, right. It's gonna touch my head. Oh, it it's gonna be fucking awesome. And we have a whole tutorial to teach you how to do that. <laughs> do, do we have a... Damn! You're so good at like, Do we have a, we have a tutorial for the uh, continental... We do! Oh no, my! So there's that. Uh, have we done one for the keg press? We have not done no. keg press. We both suck at keg press. We both suck at keg press. But Kale Beck and uh, Kim Senior group uh, have a great keg press tutorial, so we'll uh, check that out for you. Andy Deck. Yeah, film one too. Yeah. Um, and you know what? They all say the well. Phoebe has some weird variations in her video, and it's, it's not like so much instructional. It's just a video of her doing a bunch of different types of keg presses. Yeah. Not that that isn't a, a value, uh, but she's mostly like strict pressing. Yeah, like, she's she's an amazing presser. Uh, so. Yeah. Um, we should we should we should ask Chris. Yeah. To do this weird clean and jerky thing. Yeah. But uh, it's come to be what I've done. Uh, everybody micros everything, and that's awesome if you're strong. Um, but you can't. Uh, the clean jerky thing works once you get it. I have hidden. Only because Jason made me do it for an hour until I got it. <laughs> it's nice when people will do that. Yeah. Um, and shit, man. We, have, we don't have a farmer's tutorial yet. Um, let's pick it up and walk. There could be something there. What else? Um, yeah, there's, there's lots of technical parts. Well. The uh, Chris Lloyd from Weight Room and the guys who are putting on the Lip Stage Trumpet show have a really, really great tire flipping tutorial. We can have a flip tire not like a jackass. I highly recommend that you watch it. It's really, really great. It's much, it's much 